Jones, a Republican running for Senate in Ohio. Let's focus first on getting them out of Afghanistan before we say another word about the Afghan refugees. Now, Senator Sass also said that he would welcome the Afghan refugees to his neighborhood with open arms. That's very sweet of him. I'm sure a lot of liberals will say very nice things about him because he said that. But the question is not whether we help the Afghan refugees. Vance was responding to Senator Ben Sass, who calls America's commitment to saying, saving Afghan translators and their families sacrosanct. Vince Colonnais reports on these issues and more, editorial director of the conservative website Daily Caller, host of Vince Colonnais show, joining us, as you can tell, from Washington uh, this evening. Vince, is this a, a real thing in the Republican Party or is this a distraction? Well, I think it should be a real, it is a real thing for one. I think it should be a real thing that we have a, a genuine conversation uh, now about who is, who gets refugee status of any kind from Afghanistan. The public uh, on, on both parties has widely said for a long time that people have, who have served as interpreters, also known as translators, uh, to the United States uh, should be welcomed into the United States. But the reality of the refugee program that we have, the, the special immigration uh, visa program that we have, is that that category is actually a small category of the number of Afghan refugees who are potentially uh, eligible right now for refugee status in the United States. That means, like, we should definitely have a real debate about this, you know, earlier is this the year. Time, is the time to have the debate, though, while the Taliban is chasing people through the streets and beating them as they try to get to the airport? Well, it's critical to have it now. Unfortunately, this timeline didn't have to happen this way, but it is happening this way because we're dealing with a country that has a very little, tr uh, very a small paper trail, which makes it really hard to actually conduct the kinds of background checks we're of meaning. If you bring people to the United States and then say we're going to continue to do the background checks here, uh, that doesn't serve us well because this is a collapsing country. You can't, in good faith, send anybody who's here, even in the application process, back to Afghanistan. So yes, unfortunately, that's the hand we've been dealt, and you have to grapple with this. Earlier this year. The Biden administration found that the Iraqi refugee program yielded at least 4,000 fraudulent cases, and they've begun, begun investigations into over 100,000 more. So, so uh, we, can all, we can all agree. We need to, I just want to yeah. understand. We can all agree that all of the people who have special immigrant visas, meaning the people who were translators and helped Americans, should be able to come. You don't have, that's not a conversation you want to have. Yeah, I, uh, the interpreters, I think, is the broad agreement, right? That's where everybody agrees. There are other categories of special immigrant visas within, the Af within Afghanistan. And you think, include, and so, you so know, people who, I guess, who in, helped. in real time, though, how do we have this conversation? How do you try to debate right now uh, at the Kabul airport? Well, uh, you, sir, we think you're okay and, and you're not. Right. Do Repu right. I mean, do, is, well, that, is that good for Republicans to be in the fact, arguing about that right now? Is, Democrats seem to have. Well, I think it's important. I think it's important. I, and the point that J.D. Vance was making is we have to think first and foremost about American citizens, critically. And, and that should be, I think, the obligation of, of any administration, regardless of political party. The situation in Afghanistan right now is that we have rescued 3,800, approximately, according to the Daily Caller reporting tonight, my, my outlet, 3,800 American citizens, according to U.S. government officials. There are still 8,000 more American citizens not yet rescued, and we are looking at a week in order to get them out. No, so our obligation, first and foremost, it's is terrible. to them. Our, but in order to get those 8,000 people out, you have to have the political will to go and get people yes. with force, which the Biden administration doesn't seem to be willing to do. The, the question would be, right. so should we have planes sitting there empty and not taking Afghans out on the off chance that these Americans can get to the airport? I'm confused where the logic goes. Yeah, I, I think, again, it's really important that we welcome uh, people to the country, but we do it uh, with as, a, as good a vetting process as we can. Everyone and agrees. I don't think, and, and I just don't think that we, you know, I, the, the debate that's being had on the right right now uh, is, you know, how quickly can we get these people in? You know, Ben Sass uh, sa signaling, yeah, this is, all these people have to come. We made a promise to them, but how expansive is that promise? And I don't think anybody's really defining that. Well, you make a good point in terms of that the promise sort of keeps expanding. There's obviously a lot of people now who are claiming that status because they realize how difficult things are. This was some rhetoric that caught my eye from uh, Charlie Kirk. Joe Biden intentionally let it fall apart in Afghanistan because he wants a couple of hundred thousand more Ilhan Omars to come into America to change the body politic permanently. I, this is a messaging question. This seems like a real gift to Democrats to hand them this when Democrats have such a foreign policy disaster on their hands. 
Yeah, I don't, I really, what I resent is the idea that people are looking to score political points off of this at all, other than to make the basic case that you should lead the country and you have shown a track record to do that. Right now, the Biden administration I clearly isn't, and that's among both Democrats and Republicans, as you see his approval rating falling in both camps. Uh, and that's a sign of incoherence, I think, uh, and not a good one. And the Biden administration needs to move quickly to solve this because the Taliban is straight up threatening the United States if we're not out of there by August 31st. And right now, the Biden administration seems to be playing along with those threats. I was going to say, the Biden administration seems to be saying, yes, Mr. Taliban will be gone by August yeah. 31st. It's what I got uh, from his speech. We're going to have a little bit more on that later. Vince, always a great conversation. Good to see you. Leland, thank you. Thank you. When we come back, a possible new case of the mysterious Havana syndrome, this time in Vietnam. Remember, Havana syndrome is radio attacks on American personnel that are debilitating. We're going to tell you why that's important since Vice President Harris was showing up. Plus, we're talking to one Florida doctor who's leading the charge to get people vaccinated, but she says her important message was taken vastly out of context by MSNBC. Is struggling to manage your type 2 diabetes knocking you out of your zone? Lowering your A1C with once weekly